Hey guys, Ivan here and welcome to another video. In this video, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna be talking about Nick Walker and his form of doing exercises and potentially the reason why some of his body parts are lagging. Now, I'm sure you guys have noticed Nick Walker is doing a lot of partial reps. And it's not only when he's training legs, but as you can see right here in these Bulgarian split squats, he's barely even moving. I mean, he is in stretched position and he's moving a little bit upwards, but he's not really doing a full range of motion. It is interesting what he writes in the caption of this post. He says, I actually like this better than lunges just because I can focus more on the contraction. Now, in this video, I'm not gonna tell you why do I think Nick is doing things wrong. I mean, he is the third best bodybuilder in the world. He does have really thick, really big legs. On stage, however, they lack that sweep for some reason. I'm sure most of the reason is genetics, but could he change this at least slightly with proper or let's say different training? In order to grow that lateral head of the quadricep, also known as outer sweep, you are supposed to put the most focus on your legs when your legs are stretched in the movement. So maybe this is why Nick is doing these kind of reps. For some reason, from behind in the back poses, Nick's quads are actually flaring out quite a bit. He does have some sweeps. And as you can see from the side, he does have a lot of leg thickness. He just doesn't have the best outer sweeps. As I said, this must be partly genetic because there are great bodybuilders who had amazing, not just legs, but all kinds of body parts while they were doing these kind of half reps or whatever you want to call them. I'm not sure if this is even a half of a rep, but Sean Roden, the guy that is doing these squats right here, had one of the best set of legs of all time. Like, But as I said, Nick is doing these partial reps on almost every movement for some reason. It's not that he's trying to focus on the outer head when he's doing those kind of lunges. He's doing this with pretty much every exercise. Is it because his range of motion is limited because of his size? Or is it something else? I'm not so sure. But I have a couple of ideas and some explanations for you guys. But before we get to those, take a look at this. Do you guys think he's really working his abs right here? Well, this guy is kind of known for having one of the thickest abs on that Mr. Olympia stage, so he probably does know what he's doing. But I'm not so sure if this is gonna work for his other body parts. Aside from legs, from quads or outer sweeps, Nick is kind of known for having a weaker chest. That is the other body part that he is lagging. I think he fixed his back. Now it's only chest that is left that he needs to work on. And so pay attention on how he is training his chest. He is obviously not going all the way down. So he doesn't have a lot of stretch. Take a look at this, where he stops. Basically half of the movement. And then he focuses on the lockout. He is locking his triceps and his shoulders are working a lot, I'm sure. But his chest is not really getting a lot of stretch. Is this really the smartest thing to do? Is this really the best approach? Well, Arnold Schwarzenegger, arguably the bodybuilder with the best chest in the history of bodybuilding, in my opinion, the best chest of all time, wrote about how he built up his chest that much. What did he do differently than the other guys are not doing? He wrote about this in his book. So let's read this part. I found this very interesting. So in this part of Arnold's book, he wrote about what he learned from Sergio Oliva. And he says, Sergio Oliva used to force his muscles to work in harder and unexpected ways by only doing three quarter movements, lifting the bar off the chest in a bench press, for example, but not going all the way up so that the triceps never come into play in the movement and his chest never got any rest at all. After using this method of training for just a few months, I found my chest became much harder looking and more defined, which shows you how relatively small alterations in your training technique can make very substantial differences in your physique. So what Arnold, the best chest in the history of bodybuilding, was doing and what he wrote in his book was the complete opposite of what Nick Walker is doing. 
Instead of focusing on the stretched part of the movement, Nick is focusing on the lockout, which Arnold is saying is working the triceps and is resting the chest. So maybe Nick would have better results if he focused on the other part of the range of motion, if he focused only on the stretch, if he actually got some stretch in his pressing movements, instead of only focusing on the lockout. Now back to legs, as you can see right here Nick is doing this leg press and he is definitely not going super low, he is focusing again only on the lockout part of the movement, on the end part of the motion, he is not really having a deep stretch and I think I have an explanation for why he is doing this, I mean after all this guy is third best bodybuilder in the world and he is coached by let's say second best bodybuilder in the world Matt Jensen and here is one of the explanations why these guys are doing this, let me show you what Ben Pakolsky has to say about this, why is this the best way to actually train your legs. So that's as low as I should be going. It's about right there. Any further than that, the weight's going to shove me down. I can certainly go there, but look what happens to my knees. They're flaring out, my lower back is rolling, and all the tension is shifted to other places. So if I'm trying to isolate these muscles, work in your appropriate range. Alright, so we got one explanation and it kind of does explain what Nick is doing and Ben Pakolsky not only was a great bodybuilder and one of the best legs of all time, he was also, let's say, a real scientist. But there is some, let's call it bro science out there that would argue with some things Ben is saying. Now, of course, Arnold can't really argue Ben as far as leg development, but as far as chest development... I would personally rather believe Arnold, not just because his chest is that good, but because what he's saying actually makes sense. So is Nick's approach really the best approach? And me personally, I'm not an expert on this topic, I'm only going off on what I'm seeing, obviously Nick is much more efficient than me in building muscle, however I do compete in bodybuilding and legs do happen to be my best body part. I'm sure Nick's legs are bigger, but I'm 6 foot 2 and I'm a classy guy, if you guys wonder what I do for my legs, I just train them really hard, I do all the basic exercises like lunges, like squats, like leg presses and some extensions, and before every time I train, I take a scoop of Blast Max, old school abs pre-workout, it's a really strong pre-workout, it gives me crazy pumps, it makes me really freaking strong and really intense, really aggressive, if you guys wanna try it, the link is down below, by the way, it tastes amazing, and guys, if you use the code DIVA, you get a 15% discount, so guys, if you want to support me and my channel, you like my content, you can do that by buying, uh, for example, Blast Max, again, link is down below, and please use the code EVAN, thank you guys. Now, in the comment section of this video, I want to hear your take, guys, I want to hear what do people think, are these partial reps any good, and yeah, you can see that some body parts Nick has developed by working out this way, but his physique is not perfect, not yet, is this only genetic, or could it be his style of training, whatever you guys think, Tell me down below in the comment section, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, make sure to check out the old school apps for all the crazy supplements they have, and guys, thank you so much for watching all these videos, all the best guys, and bye bye.